going on guys? Tony Maritato, physical therapist here. I was recording some other YouTube content and I thought, you know what? The individuals in my total knee replacement support group probably would like some new, novel, interesting ways to both stretch into flexion and stretch into extension. Now I know getting on the ground isn't easy for a lot of you. I've got videos that show you how to do it safely, how to practice it, because I do think every human has to have the ability to get on the ground and return to standing. But for those of you who can get on the ground, and for those of you who are looking for something different and new and interesting, let me share a couple of my favorite ways, actually just one of my favorite ways, to work on flexion and extension. So I'm in the hallway. This is actually a bathroom door behind me, but let me show you guys what I'm gonna do. So pretend that it was my right knee that had the knee replacement. One of the ways I love to do it is I position myself in the door frame. If I'm working on extension first, I think you guys can see I've got my non-surgical leg inside the bathroom. I've got my surgical leg up against the wall. I'm literally sitting, the bottom, my sit bone, the ischial tuberosity is literally touching the wall, the door frame. And what I'm doing is I'm working into extension here. If I wanted to get a little bit of overpressure, I absolutely can use my hands. If I want to get more overpressure, I can bring the other leg up, crisscross it over, assuming I don't have knee problems on this side, and just the weight of that leg is pushing me into extension. Now, if I wanna work on flexion, so as I bring the knee back, the thigh, the hamstring back toward me, the foot slides down, it's another way to do heel slides, gravity assisted, and then from here, depending on your range of motion, if I was gonna guess, let's say it's about 90 degrees right there, I can grab from behind the knee, I can grab from on top, and what I'm doing is I'm trying to create a little posterior tibial glide, but once I get down, let's say I, that's about it, oh, I just, I can't go anymore. Now watch what happens when I flex my ankle, my shin bone translates down and back. That increases the knee flexion during ankle flexion. So it's actually called ankle dorsiflexion, but the idea here is this is working me into deeper knee flexion. Of course, I can bring the other leg up as well. I can use that to pull and slide down. I can come in here. Sometimes I can come up and just kind of grab inside the door frame. There's just whatever, whatever you want to do. What I like about this is this frame allows me to keep my foot straight. So I don't turn my foot out. I don't turn my foot in stays right in a long line, uh, the line of the door frame. My knee stays a little bit wider than my hip and my shoulder. Biomechanically, that's a very neutral position. And then from here, I can work in toward the midline as well as out toward the hip. Even if I were to have complications long-term and I just never get the range of motion back in my knee, that's a big F but let's just say even if, then as I increase range of motion through my hip, as I increase range of motion through my ankle, I'm going to improve the functional use of the entire lower extremity. What's amazing about the human body is we have a lot of redundancies. We have a lot of systems that allow us that when one thing isn't working, other things can make up the difference. So for those of you who are just absolutely at the end of your rope, you're like, I'm fed up, I'm never gonna get any more knee replacement, or get any more knee flexion. You will, you absolutely will, as long as you keep working on it. But you can focus on improving hip and ankle mobility, which will help do the activities that maybe your knee won't let you do right now. All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for the support. We're at 5,000 plus subscribers on the channel. That is phenomenal. That's been less than a year. I just want to reach out and say thank you to all of you who show your support by clicking the subscribe button and liking these videos. In the future, please post your questions in the YouTube comments. I know I'm falling behind, but I do read every single one of them, and I do my best to address the ones that ask me specific questions. Otherwise, 
Thank you for much, so much for your support. I'll catch you on the next video.